What is going on, everybody? My name is Michael Levan. Thank you so much for joining me today. And this is going to be part one of a three part series of deploying a Go app with Kubernetes. So in this part, part one, we're going to see how to build a Docker image with a Go application that I've already written. We're going to push it to Docker Hub and then we're going to run it locally. The second part will be how to run a Go application inside of AKS or Azure Kubernetes services. And then the third part is going to be how to take a Go app and how to run it in GKE or Google Kubernetes engine. So with that, let's jump right into part one. The first thing that we're going to do here is we're just going to take a look at the application. So what it is, is it's a simple web API. We'll just go over it step by step. I have my package main, I have my imports, so I'm encoding some JSON, I'm using the FMT package, the log package, and the net HTTP package for the web API calls. If I scroll down here on line 10, I'm creating a new struct type, and it's who am I, and I'm able to pass in a name, a title, and a state. I am calling the request one function, which we'll take a look at in a second, but that's essentially just handling all of our handlers and our responses. So if I scroll down here on line 20, I have this function for who am I, and then I'm passing in some data, my name, my title at my job, and the state that I live in. I'm encoding it via JSON, and then I'm printing to the terminal. If you're running it in the terminal, for example, you can see what's getting hit at what time. So then I have my home page where I just say, welcome to the Go Web API. And then I have an about me page where it just says who, and then it says a little bit about Michael Levan, and then again, print LN statements for both the home page and the about me function, which just, you know, prints out to the line that you've run that URL, essentially, you just want to slash about me or, you know, just slash for the home page. And then we have our request function here, and that's what's handling all of our functions. So it's handling our home page, our about me page, and the who am I page. And then finally, we have a log fatal here, and within here, we're passing in our listen and serve on port 8080. So with that, let's go ahead and actually build this code. So I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna open up my Docker file so you can see, and the Docker file is doing a few different things. So it's using the Golang latest Docker image from Docker Hub, it's creating a new working directory. We have an export here for that Go 111 module so we can pull down any version of the Go Web API, which is in GitHub, which I just showed you in the main.go. And then we're gonna CD into the build directory, which we're creating on line three. And then we're gonna clone our Go Web API from GitHub. We're gonna go and we're gonna CD into build Go Web API main, and then we're gonna run a Go build. Now remember that main is just this directory where our application is. And then we're gonna be exposing on port 8080, and then our entry point to actually run our application that we've built. So let's go ahead and just open up a terminal here. LS, here are all of our files. I'm gonna run docker build, and then I'm just gonna put this dot here, so that means it's gonna look in the current directory for a docker file, which as we can see is one, two, three, four, five lines down. All right, so it's gonna go through and this is gonna build our Docker image, as we can see, it has been built successfully. Actually, you know what? Let's do something really quick. Let's do Docker build minus T, Golang Web API. Let's just, that just gives it a tag, so it actually has a name now. So we'll do Docker image LS, and we can see that that Golang Web API Docker build has been created, the image exists, which is great. So the next thing that we wanna do now that it's actually built is we wanna push this image up to Docker Hub. Now, if you don't have a Docker Hub account, what you can do is you can go to this web page right here and you can sign up completely for free. So with that, I actually have some instructions in here. If you go under Docker Hub and you go to push to Docker Hub, this is essentially how you can log into Docker Hub. So what I'm doing is I'm logging in with my username and we will get prompted for a password. So we'll type in Docker login, username, and then my username is admin turn DevOps, right? And we're gonna get prompted for the password here. Jason, my password. And as we can see, the login has succeeded. So now what I wanna do is I wanna tag my image 
So let me copy this and then we'll go through this. So we're going to be using Docker tag and we're going to be tagging that Golang web API, that Docker image that we just built. And then we're going to tag it with our username slash Golang web API. And then we'll give it a tag of latest. We'll run this. We'll do Docker image LS again. We can see our new tag right there. And then finally, we want to actually push this to Docker Hub copy this so we're going to run docker push and then we're going to just be pushing that tag up to docker hub and depending on your upload speed this could take a few minutes All right now was actually pretty quick uh because i have fios one gig so one gig up one gig down so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to clear my screen and then i'm going to open up a web browser go here go to docker hub go to docker hub and then we could just search for Golang Web API. Oop, actually did not come up. Let's type admin turn DevOps. All right, so we'll go to admin turn DevOps. And for, oh, here it is. Okay, Golang Web API. So we can see that this has been pushed up a few seconds ago. This was a repository that actually already existed because I was, you know, just testing it. But you can do essentially the same exact thing. Uh, you'll just have to obviously go in and create that repository in Docker Hub once you sign up. So now that we have that done, let's go ahead and run Minikube locally. So if you've never worked with Minikube before, you will have to install it. You can go to this URL here, depending on your operating system, and you're able to install Minikube. So I am running on Windows 10 right now, which means that the VM driver I'm gonna use, aka the virtual machine that Minikube is gonna be running on, it's gonna be in Hyper-V. So what I'm gonna do is, if I actually open up Hyper-V here, we can see that I have Minikube running, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna destroy it, and then I'm gonna create a new one so we can all see it. So I'm gonna run Windows Terminal. All right, so we'll do Minikube destroy. And then what this is gonna do is, oh, sorry, Minikube delete, not destroy, delete. So what this is going to do is this is going to go through and delete the current Minikube cluster that I have running right now. All right, and as we can see, it has been deleted. So what I could do is I can type in Minikube start VM driver equals Hyper-V. So now what this is going to do is this is going to spin up a new Minikube server on Hyper-V, it's just gonna be a virtual machine. And then what that's gonna be able to do is that's gonna allow us to work with Kubernetes locally. And just to keep in mind, Minikube is 100% a development environment. Um, there's no failover, there's no nothing like that. It's literally just a Kubernetes cluster running on your local host. It's very lightweight, it's awesome for testing stuff, but definitely don't use it in production. Okay, so I've sped this up a little bit. So if your Minikube server is still running, go ahead and just pause the video for now and then unpause and jump right back in. So now that we have our Minikube cluster up, I'm gonna run kubectl, hit pods. We have none, of course, because this is brand new. We could do get nodes and we can see that Minikube is running on our local host. So let's go back to VS Code here, close out of these instructions. And then I'm gonna open up the Kubernetes directory and open up the go kubernetes.yaml. So let's just go through this. What this is, is it's a Kubernetes manifest that we have a metadata of our Go Web API. We're essentially matching those labels to the Go Web API application. Sorry about that. And then we're gonna be creating two replicas, so two of the same application for redundancy purposes. And then we have our template, which we're essentially passing in our labels of the key is app, and then the value is go web API. And then we have our spec, which is where we're pulling down from, we're giving it a name of go web API. And then the image is admin turn DevOps slash Golang web API latest, because that's my Docker hub. That's my repository up there. That's where the Docker image is where we pushed it. And then finally, we have our container port of 8080. So then if we scroll down to line 21 here, we're also creating a service, a Kubernetes service. And then again, we're specifying the metadata of name Go Web API. The selector is selecting that app and then Go Web API key value pair. And then the ports are on port 8080. So what we can do is we can go back up to the terminal here. 
we will ls into Kubernetes. Okay, we can see our go Kubernetes.yaml and we'll run kubectl create minus f go Kubernetes.yaml. And then as we can see, our deployment and service has been created. Let's open up the terminal here again. We'll run kubectl get deployments. And as we can see, they are still being created. We'll run kubectl get pods. These are still being created as well, and it will take a few moments. And as we can see, our Go Web API is up and running. The pods are up. kubectl get deployments. And we can see that our Go Web API, two are ready, two are up to date, and two are available. So with that, that's how you can get a Go Web API or really any Go application, depends on what you're running, up inside of Kubernetes. So remember, in the next part, we're going to actually see this application go into a production level environment running in Azure Kubernetes services. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you again next time.